multi homing is a highly desired feature which has been provisioned in ip version 4 in ip version 6 now for ngn which is based in ip version 6 we are going to explore it and look at the formal definition of multi homing the horizontal and vertical variants of it multi homing actually refers to having multiple connections from a given host node site location to the network this could involve the multi homing or multi connections to a single access network core network or the transport networks the reliability of the link or node failures in is a given path can be significantly reduced because we'll have a failover once we have a failover link it could also be utilized to achieve load sharing and the higher utilization of network resources could essentially be achieved in ip version 4 at the transport layer stream controlled trans transmission protocol has been used to provide multi homing um, similarly at the network layer we have the uh, bgp um, paths which are advertised uh, through ebgp between different autonomous systems or domains so uh, we'll quickly run down uh, through the uh, uh, stream control transmission protocol uh, for multi homing and multi streaming uh, so we have a host or a node on the left hand side and we've got one on the right hand side so three simultaneous streams are being uh, established or uh, being uh, streamed between the two uh, nodes through two different networks uh, sctp is ensuring that uh, the three streams are provisioned uh, alternate paths at the transport layer so it means the the sockets uh, independent sockets are being created for the three streams um, which could possibly use more than one interface so here we see that we have stream one and two both using network interface one stream three using network interface two uh, we've got two um, access networks uh, so uh, stream one and stream two are using network one uh, stream three is using network two uh, this actually means that there is a kind of orthogonality or exclus exclusivity between the uh, between these uh, streams so sctp allows the multi homing to be realized as such but this was the scope of IP version 4. In IP version 6, the goals are essentially the same to have failover, better throughput, reliability, etc., etc. But here we have some added features. For instance, we've got multiple network interfaces and we have multiply connected IP version 6 addresses. By multiply connected, I mean that one IP address could be mapped to a single interface or more than one interfaces similarly uh, one interface could be mapped onto one ipv6 address or could be mapped onto multiple ipv6 addresses so it means that there is a heavy massive parallel connectivity which is possible this makes um, well uh, multi homing not only exciting but the very header or the structure of IP version 6 packet format uh, complements it. We have the next header option in IP version 6 that allows multiple connections to have its own uh, corresponding header in the IP packet, IPv6 packet. And then we have enhanced addressing schemes because uh, IP version 4 was tied to classful or the CIDR, but in IP version 6, uh, we could actually adopt any addressing, addressing scheme that is per pertinent to a certain context. So once we have the uh, 
options to multi-home in a variety of way. Uh, NGN allows us to have horizontal multi-homing or a vertical multi-homing. So, um, since NGN uh, has multiple network interfaces um, at the transport stratum, multiple IPv6 addressing at the uh, uh, transport stratum at the network layer, and uh, we could have multiple network prefixes also, that is multiple ISPs are connected. So, this could allow the global route, routing scaling um, to take place. The NGN transport stratum uh, could have multiple access technologies, uh, for instance, wireless, wired, or uh, uh, in 3G, LTE, LTEA, WiMAX, uh, etc., etc. Uh, similarly, we could have multiple core networks also. Different NGNs uh, could be connected to each other. So we have a lot of possibilities. So in horizontal multi-homing, we could think about uh, providing multi-homing to a site or to a host. Uh, as far as site is concerned, it is straightforward, uh, where the site connects to same or another NGN provider through multiple network connections. Uh, in host multi-homing, it is the host which is IPv6 capable, so the, so the host could simultaneously access multiple uh, access networks. So this is the uh, uh, horizontal multi-homing, uh, the scenario is for host multi-homing. Uh, here you can see that we have uh, um, uh, multiple uh, IPv6 addresses, uh, so we have uh, uh, independent um, um, uh, streams or connections which are based upon independent transport uh, layer uh, sessions, each having its own distinct IPv6, IPv6 address, which is binded onto a, a unique network interface, uh, and then correspondingly at the um, transport stratum uh, on the access side, we have different access technologies, and we could have multiple uh, core uh, networks access as well. So on the left hand side, we have a lot of provision for multi homing. Um, on the right hand side, we have a host which does not have provision for multi homing. Now we look at the possibility of having vertical multi homing. So vertical multi homing is what? It is the systematic way of looking at how each layer, starting from the lowest layer and going up, um, how could we provide multi homing at every layer? Uh, so, multi vertical multi-homing is a feature that has to be provided at the OS because the operating system uh, actually sits on top of the, uh, the, the middleware and the hardware with a lot of uh, network interfaces and addresses. So, this enhances, verti vertical multi-homing enhances the very concept of multi-homing from one-to-one, -one, which is done in traditional TCP IP because each uh, TCP socket requires a new, unique IP, IPv6 address uh, to many to many mappings uh, uh, in uh, IPv6. Now, uh, uh, this is going to trigger a lot of complexities, but vertically handling it as part of the OS is going to resolve the issues. So, uh, we could have uh, multiple mappings or many to many mappings for IPv6 ad addresses uh, at the sessions at the transport layer and the port numbers at the application layer. Uh, so this helps to dynamically update the relationship uh, that is crisscross relationship between uh, IPv6 addresses and port numbers. Uh, in order to look at it, as we said, we are uh, assuming that the operating system is going to handle it. The application layer function is implemented in the OS on the uh, user side. The, the host. On the network side, it is implemented in the transport uh, stratum and the um, um, service stratum. At the transport stratum, the network attachment control function has to be cognizant or uh, aware of the fact that vertical multi-homing is being desired or being, is being implemented on the host side, uh, which uh, would in turn have an effect on the uh, transport functions on the access edge and the core um, side. So this is going to help dynamically control the required quality of service uh, expected 
in a certain SLA by the client for simultaneous connections. The vertical multi-homing could be seen as, uh, as um, um, basic to most advanced evolution. Uh, if you look at uh, the diagram, we have the application layer, transport layer, IPv6 network layer, and MAC layer multi-homing. So this has to be addressed as an operating system or application layer perspective. Um, so we could have very rudimentary, number one, physical or uh, MAC layer uh, uh, multi-homing. That means career aggregation, LTE, LTEA, and WiMAX, uh, particularly mobile WiMAX 2.0 provide this. Uh, then we could have the multi-homing that includes the physical layer and the Mac uh, and the network layer. The physical Mac layer, network layer, and the transport layer. This could include the streaming control transmission protocol and the datagram congestion control protocol, and then including the application layer as well. 